To draw our great wave, we're going to be using the smaller black oil pastels. Um, there is a little bit of paper around this oil pastel, sort of like a crayon, so this will help you keep your paper a little bit cleaner because you can hold the black oil pastel around the paper, and that will help you um, to keep from kind of smearing it and getting fingerprints and stuff like that on your drawing. Now, it's still important to kind of watch where you put your arm and your hand so that you're not dragging it across your paper and creating a lot of smears. To start our Great Wave, we're going to look closely at Hokusai's um, woodcut, and we're going to try to draw very similar waves to what he had. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start over on the edge of my paper about halfway down, and I'm just going to come across and kind of make something that looks like a little wave just like that. Right below, I'm going to take my oil pastel, and I'm just going to make a really crazy kind of squiggly line that sort of just dances across the paper. This is creating the white cap part of the wave or the part that's starting to tumble over. Next we're going to make the large great wave. So I'm going to start on the side, I'm going to come over and I'm going to arch way over this first little peak I made and then I'm going to do the same thing that I did below. I'm just going to create a squiggly jagged line that dances across all the way to the other side of the paper. That is the white cap for our great wave or the part that is starting to crash over. So the next part is to create the um, underside of this wave. So I'm just going to use a curved line that comes down and touches my first wave just like that. And to make this look a little bit more like Hokusai's block print, I'm going to create some more curved lines inside my wave so that we can kind of copy his style. All right, after that, I'm just going to add another curved line in the corner to create one more wave and then right up here at the top to create one final wave and I'm also going to go back with some curved lines underneath my first white cap so that again I can make my painting look a little bit more like a woodblock carving by creating those different sections. Okay, across the back, I'm going to make a horizon line. That is the line where our sky touches our ocean. So I'm just going to come across the paper with a flat line. And if you'll notice in the background of Hokusai's painting, he has Mount Fuji, the mountain that he adored that was very, very important in Japan. And so I'm going to create my mountain. It kind of has a flat top on it and a little bit of a squiggle line to create what looks like snow on top. Now the next part will be painting our great wave. We're gonna paint our great wave using our puck tempera paints. Now remember, to make these work, they have to be wet. So you're gonna have a bowl of clean water and that is the water you need to use to put onto your paint and to swirl your brush around in order to activate your paint or make it work. We'll have a bowl of water that gets dirty and this is the bowl you need to clean your brush off in. Please pay close attention to where you're cleaning your brush because you want really good clean water in order to keep your paints fresh and to make them work. If you need a little extra help getting your brush clean, dab it out on your sponge and then you can move on to your clean water to put back on top of your paints. To paint our Great Wave, we're going to use a combination of warm and cool colors. Cool colors are colors like blue, turquoise, green, purple, and warm colors are colors like pink, yellow, orange, red, and you have a mixture of those inside your palettes. We're going to use our cool colors on our ocean and we're going to use our warm colors on our sky. And I'm just going to start with the cool color of my choice. I'm going to get when you're painting your great wave, please be sure that you really pay attention to where the white caps on the waves are. That's the part of the wave that is starting to crash over back into the ocean. So the top part of our great wave and then this section right through here in the first wave we drew in between that pointed line and this jagged line we made, those areas need to stay white. So please make sure that you're paying attention when you're painting and you leave those areas white because that is what is going to make your waves look like they're crashing over. My ocean is painted in. I was careful to make sure that I left the white caps of the waves white so that they would look like they were crashing over. And you can see I've used a lot of the different cool colors, green, purple, blue, turquoise. I've mixed them together a little bit on the paper to blend them and make some nice looking ocean colors. And the second part is to start using the warm colors to paint our sky. 
So you can start out, you can make it look like sunsets, you can just do a couple of warm colors. It's completely up to you. Um, again, the warm colors are orange, red, yellow, and there's also a magenta or a pink. I'm gonna be looking to see that you know the difference between the warm and cool colors. So please think about what you're doing so that when I walk around and check out your paintings, I can see that you know the difference because you're using cool colors on your ocean and you're using the warm colors in your sky. So I'm gonna finish up my sky and then we'll talk about completing the painting. The last thing I'm actually gonna paint on my painting is Mount Fuji. So we've got a little bit of brown paint right here in our palette, and I'm just gonna use that to do the base of the mountain. And the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna do just a little bit of splatter painting, because if you've ever been to the ocean, if you've ever seen a video or an image, a lot of times when you have huge waves like this crashing in, you're gonna get what we call ocean spray, and that is some um, splatters of water or drops of water that are kind of splashing out from the wave. So in order to do that, there's going to be a bucket of white paint on your table. You're going to dip your paintbrush inside and you're going to take a finger and you're just going to tap your brush really hard on your paper to make some splatters that look a little bit like that ocean spray. This gives our painting a little bit more dimension and it's just kind of fun to do.